So a lot of you have been asking about my 5000 watt e-bike uh, that I made a riding video of. So I'm going to give you a little in-depth review about it and we'll check out the parts on it. So starting here in the back, we have a QSV3 5000 watt hub motor and this is a 3.5T. Um, so it's more for torque uh, rather than speed, but since I have it on a 26 inch rim, I can get speeds up to 60 miles an hour. Um, so coming up to the battery box, I made this battery box out of plexiglass and aluminum uh, 90 degree angle. I just basically cut out the shapes and then riveted the aluminum to it. So it looks pretty good. It only fits two of my batteries here. Um, unfortunately, but I will make a separate battery box that will allow me to hit 72 volts. In here I made my series connector for the two batteries as well. So the battery box is actually screwed into the water bottle mount. Um, and I've got some bolts in there. I don't know if you can see right there. So that's working great. It's solid. I've got a strap holding on the back here. Just made two little holes and it is it's like very solid. It is not going to move while riding. Second battery just slides in like so. Super simple. Then I get my series connector and my foam to separate the two batteries in between because of those bolts. It's hard to countersink them or counterbore them, but I got this foam which is perfect. The foam slides in in between the batteries, keeping them tight. And then I connect this series connector up and plug it in. Now the way that I made this lid stay in is that I actually made a little slot here with two of the 90 degree angles and it fits right in between that slot, keeping it in place. Let's see if I could show it. See how it goes in the slot. And then perfectly on and Velcros, keeping it in place. Perfect. Coming up to the controller, this is a Savaton 72 150 amp, 72 volts, 150 amp speed controller. Um, it can burst up to 350 amps, which is pretty crazy. Um, so I have it hooked up here. I'm using the original connectors because they are waterproofed and they are pretty good. People don't like them because they're clunky, but it's honestly not that bad. It, it looks a little messy here, but I'm fine with it. The frame is a Trek 33 series. It's a Trek 3 series bike. Um, simple little mountain bike uh, with some gears. I don't have any gears on the back because, well, there was no room for the cassette. There is room for a single speed, which I do have and I will be putting on just in case, you know, anything happens, I can pedal my way back. Um, wiring kind of tucked in here. Not the best. Um, the computer that comes with it. I got the motor controller and the uh, computer up here all from, oh, it came with the brakes and the, the handle grips as well and the throttle. All from Andy Kirby's cloudstow.com. I'm sure if you're watching me, you've heard of Andy Kirby. So I got the idea from him started building this up and I use it on this Trek frame because I did not feel like spending 600 bucks for a for an enduro frame but you know this thing works perfectly you just gotta make do with what you have so I'm using the V brakes the rim brakes and they honestly work pretty well it's not the best but it, it stops me enough so I got the front rim brakes rear this rim is not meant for rim brakes but i'm using them anyway and it's it's working pretty well i have full regen on the motor as well so that helps me with braking not bad at all yep everything's good i would recommend getting fenders for each because this thing kicks up a lot of water if you're riding in in wet conditions or muddy conditions uh going back to the motor i do have two torque arms because this frame is extremely small for the amount of power that this motor can put out so I have a torque arm on here as well as the other side ah. it, can be, 
which alleviates the stress on the frame. It puts it all on this bar and just keeps it keeps the motor from twisting the frame out of place. And that's the main thing that people were worried when I posted stuff about this build um, on forums and whatnot about this frame just being too weak for the motor. But I have gone full blast with this thing and not had a problem at all. Um, I know this motor is huge for this frame and everybody recommends the enduro frame but I said I don't want to spend that 600 bucks. <laughs> I've got this frame perfectly good here. I can just make a battery box, mount up the controller and yeah so I've got that there. To mount the controller I have this acrylic plate as well or plexiglass screwed into this bracket that I made this uh, aluminum bracket um, that just is a v-clamp under the frame which keeps this in place super tight very solid design um, if there's anything I change about this I definitely I'm gonna make this new battery box for 72 volts because this is a 72 volt controller uh, anything else I'm it's pretty good uh, I'm gonna make that a single speed single speed to the back there the the frame does not have a spot for disc brakes but I can get a new fork to have uh, a spot to mount disc brakes on right now I'm just having I just have cable brakes and people were heating me about that <laughs> but they do the job also a new seat is needed because this seat is very hard and going over big bumps with no suspension with this heavy of a system uh, do not recommend <laughs> tires these are uh, Bond Trager, Bond Trager. <laughs> uh, I've got these tires on here. These are stock on the bike. I would recommend, someone recommended me to get Maxxis hookworms. They allow really good traction on uh, roads as well as off-road systems or, or terrains. Um, so yeah, definitely invest in some good tires, unlike me. <laughs> Guess I just don't care about safety. So we got the controller plugged in turn on the system we're gonna hold this down and then I got a passcode you can set your own passcode which is really cool prevents people from attempting to steal your bike on the display we have the real-time speed in miles per hour you can change it the odometer I have 194 miles on this thing believe it or not with no problems the voltage Um, and the time. So you also got these power assist levels. Level one, or you could actually go to zero. Zero just doesn't do anything with the thing. In case you're like around friends, that has happened to me before. And I need to put it on zero because they'll just twist the throttle. <laughs> Level one, that's about 10 miles an hour. Two is about 18 to 20. Three, around 30. Four, around 40 to 45. And five max, which is up to 60 miles an hour. Um, each level gets more powerful with torque as you go up, which is absolutely insane because level two has ridiculous torque even. <laughs> um, we can go into the menu here. We got the brightness, time, the system, which is the just voltage and everything you got. You can program this thing with a USB dongle right here and you download the app MQ MQ con MQ C O N and that allows you to program your speed controller with the parameters that you desire um, so yeah again this system is on Andy Kirby's cloudsto.com cloudsto.com not sponsored wish I was but yeah, I, I definitely recommend using him. He responds to all of your emails personally. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great experience. And I was able to complete my build flawlessly with everything that I wanted in the bike. So it's great. Um, anyway, let me know if you have questions about something I didn't cover, something you'd like to see more of, something you're just generally interested in. I did not film the process of building this bike, unfortunately, but uh, 
I do have all the information on it. So I can answer any of you guys' questions, anything you'd like to know. Now let's get to writing. The best thing about this is that it's completely silent. No, no mid-drive battery noise, no mid-drive motor noise. This is a dramatically inclined hill, and I'm going to do a little speed runs. on level five. That just goes to show how ridiculously fast it is. Yeah, I keep, I keep uh, to level three on the pads with exception of my last video about this bike where people heated me for going that fast. But um, yeah, I keep it level three for my safety when I'm in the open uh, closed trails like this with trees around I do wear a dot approved helmet and a motorcycle jacket so that's for those people that wanted to get on me about safety Please consider subscribing. My Patreon is also linked in the channel page. If you would consider supporting me and my projects, because I do fund these projects all myself. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a safe and nice day. Peace. Peace.